All right, so jumping right back into Photoshop now. Again, I could do a new, right? That's very easy, just new and 640, 640, but there's also a way of importing. And if you look here, under import, video frames to layers. So if I click on that, it's then it's a question of finding your video file. So I just have some different video files to play with here because this is not only how you would animate over video, but this is how you would also use Photoshop to do your cinemagraph. So I've just got this little video here that I just uploaded. And when we import, it's gonna give us like we've seen in Media Encoder before where I can change my in out points, right? So I could, if I wanna like designate a beginning and a, a, to make a loop. Now, obviously this is just handheld footage. It's not on a tripod. So this wouldn't really work if I was gonna do a cinemagraph because number one, the camera's moving and the subject is moving. So this is when we get to the cinemagraph, I'm gonna probably wanna do a stabilize if I haven't used a tripod. But again, this one here is where I'm going to do animate over footage. I can say beginning to end, I can say select this range only. And most importantly here, I want to limit it in the number of frames because this video is probably 2997 frames. Well, I want to simplify that down. So I could say limit it to every three frames, limit to every four frames, which means it's going to be a lighter weight, simplified animation process. So I'm going to do four frames, let's say, because it clips not that long. I'll hit OK. And it's now going to make la a layer for every fourth frame of that video. And there we go. Now, a couple things I've got to deal with here now is for one, this is obviously not a 640 by 640. I could always correct that by changing my canvas size to being a 640 by 640. Or even better than that is starting by doing an image size, leaving it locked and finding the shortest or the tallest of the two. So I'm just tell it to be width to be 640 by 640 or 640 in width. Hit OK. Give it a second. But then I'm going to need to go to my canvas size and have that only be 640 by 640. Now, again, that's only because I'm asking for this to be a 640 by 640. If I was doing this just to make it into an animatable, animated GIF over video, I could leave it be the original format size. Okay, And you see that now has made it 640 in width. And now I can do a canvas size of 640 in height not using the relic and just tell the height now to be 640 so that it's going to crop see the entire thing now if i look here under layers you can see i've got 36 layers converted from that video and you can see by default it's playing every third frame well, we'll play it and you see how you get that kind of stop motion kind of effect there okay? which again is another way of doing stop motion animation now, if that's too jaggedy or jumpy or slow, I can select first, hold shift, select the last, and tell it to have, again, like no delay. So it plays a little more straight ahead. Now, zoom in so we can see what's actually going on here. So I've got 36 layers and 36 frames. Well, if I want to animate to this and do some interesting little you know, graphics. I can come in and choose brush size. Let me make it harder quality here. And now it's just a question of finding what frame and what layer do I want to add my little animatable elements over top of here. So let's see, that is going to be this frame. Actually, maybe I'll go back a few. Okay, so now I'm frame 14, layer 14. And now I can come in here and just animate over top of the layer. So I can come here and go to the next one, jump ahead. 
expand upon what I'm animating. And there's a little bit of guessing here as far as, you know, how you're going to animate this little animation elements. And let's just see what that did really quick. Got to play through. Cycle back to the beginning, and you'll see those little animations have been added. See? Just that quickly. And all I'm doing is just painting over top of the individual layer on the frame basis. And you could do that with, you know, just about anything that you want. So go ahead and just make it black. And I'll go to frame four. And I'll just pick a point here to have Okay, so I'm going to kind of remember these little marks where they're at. If you need to, you could actually play around with opacity so you get, again, a little onion skinning to be able to see the previous layer. But you can actually find some very interesting, happy mistakes here when you just kind of freehand do it. So this, again, is often called doodle gif. I'm just painting right over the layer. And let's just see what that looks like when it plays through. It can be a little tedious doing frame by frame by frame animation like that, but you can see the results are pretty smooth. And you can see how you could add arms, you could add little details to this all, you could, you know, literally paint elements onto this. Um, let me show you what some people have done in the past. Got some samples here from students past just to show you you know, the range of what people do for their animated GIF assignment. And so here, right, all they're doing is using the, uh, a new layer and copying, you know, a patch of fur to create the illusion of the dog bark, uh, blinking. Some people that do a little bit more illustration work, you can see again, as long as the tail is a separate layer, we get the little drips of the eyes uh, or the drips of the saliva, the tongue is animated a little bit. Um, Again, all the meme potential with, you know, cutting apart photographs. So again, the open eye is simply a version of this eye flipped and copied over there. And then they just hide it. Um, simple animation here over a photo, right? Even when you wanna go with creative artistic stuff, you got, you know, like colors, kind of like I did with the van. So you just have different layer versions of his coat and colors for his coat and bow tie and the borders all activated at different times. This person animated over a video of a cat jumping. So the cat actually has a cape, that kind of neat. Even something is silly as cutting out the baseball and animating the baseball, which again isn't very good because it's going and hitting him in the back of the head there. So lots of potential when we're playing around with, again, some of these animatable capabilities. I just think that's pretty cool. Now, moving on though to the cinema graphs. Now, again, remember the cinema graph is where you're taking, you know, um, video, locking it down. So again, you want it to be very, um, you know, like I showed you guys before, using that uh, 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 
warp stabilizer. Okay, so I have this video here of Henry and I'm holding the camera. And so you see there's a little bit of shakiness to that. Okay, so this is where you can use either Premiere Pro or you can use After Effects and you can stabilize that video to make it look like it's locked down and not moving. So here's my shaky footage. You could also use Premiere to do this, right? We showed you how to stabilize in Premiere. Where you at? There you go. And the whole idea is if you want the cinemagraph to work properly, okay, and I've got a lot of footage here, which I don't really need. I only really need the section of where his tail is wagging right about there. And let's see, I'm trying to get the curl back. So let's just make it end there, 525. Five. Composition settings. Go oh, 525. Five. I could even tell this already to be a 640 of 640, but I'd rather show you guys how to do that again back in Photoshop. Now, Warp Stabilizer is under the Animation tab. So I'm going to select my video, Animation, Warp Stabilize Effect. We'll call this like we saw in Premiere. It's going, I'm going to tell it to have no motion. I'm going to tell it to just do this on the position scale and rotation instead of the full on warp. And it's going to read the footage and try to create that illusion that it is not moving at all. But as we saw before, it is going to crop and I'm going to lose some of that in order to stabilize and make it look like it's not actually moving. And it says 30 seconds. Just let this finish. And we're at 70%. You can see it's doing its process over here. Seven, six, five. And then it stabilizes. You'll see it'll scale up in order to try and lock that key move. Okay. And now you see the video looks much more stable. It's not moving around, even though he's moving. So all I need to do now is just output this export, add to media encoder. Tell it to, of course, be a stabilized version of this now instead of the original file. You never want to save over the original file or else it will literally crash the software because you're recording over the video that you're using. So when you send this off to the media encoder, you want to actually just give it a different name. Name, size, all those issues. Now, I'm going to skip that part right there because I already do have him stabilized. I don't need all this extra time of letting the media encoder do its thing. But we know about the media encoder. We've seen the media encoder already. Shut it. Because I've already done this as a statement. Okay. Go ahead and I'll leave that open. Why not? All right, so back to Photoshop, right? So I've already got them stabilized. And now again, I'm going to import video frames to layers. Find my video files for cinemagraphs. Here he is, uh, Stable Henry. And import it. And once again, because I'm bringing video into layers, you can see what it is. Do that. And limit it to every so few frames. I'll go with every three frames. And I could even, like I say, eliminate and try to find the spot where I have a start. I kind of like it here where he's facing forward and his tail is curled. So I have it start there. And then have it end at the end where it's curled. He's even got a little yawn here. And hit OK. 
it's going to convert those into layers and convert them into frames. And so you see at this time, because I said every third, I've got 67 frames, 67 layers. And what I wanna do now is I need to create what the freeze frame is, okay? Now I know already my freeze frame is actually the very last frame is what I want because he's got his little tongue out, see that? So what I'm gonna do is in my layers here, knowing that that's my freeze frame, let's go ahead and call it freeze or something like that. And I'm gonna put that all the way to the beginning. Because what I'm gonna do is say, if that's the very first frame I've got, okay, is my freeze. What I need to do now, because if I actually go to the very beginning now, right, all the way to my layer one, I want my freeze to be my layer at frame one. Go ahead and turn that off, right like that. But what I want to actually now be the only thing moving here, instead of his whole bed, his whole body, all that stuff, I need to remove the part from him that I want to see in the rest of my cinemagraph, which is going to be his tail. And so the easiest way in Photoshop to kind of do that is I'm gonna select the section around here where his tail animates, like that. Let's do a select mask so I can soften and feather it a little bit and see what I actually am going to remove from my freeze frame. Ketchup. There we go, and that's my selection. I wanna feather it so it's a soft kind of selection. So I've got some feathering out here so it blends into the other layers. And I'm just gonna hit OK. And now, because I've got this part selected here of my freeze frame, I'm just going to delete his frozen tail. I don't know where it went. Oh, it's still thinking. Just give it a second. here. Remember, Photoshop is a beast, guys. And when we're dealing with all these frames, it's quite a heavy file right now. So it does look like it's taking a moment. Sometimes you can tell if it's frozen is if I hover over another button. You notice none of these buttons are highlighting right now when I hover over. So it is kind of thinking in the background. Again, I could have done a much smaller video clip, which probably would have been better. Maybe it's not going to work. Maybe it's going to crash on me. And come on. Not working. Ah, see, now it gives me some pop-ups here. So it should be coming along here. There we go, okay? Now, right now I'm only looking at his freeze frame. And what I want to do here is I want him to be frozen in time. I want the background to be frozen in time, but the only thing I wanna see is the tail wag. So what I'm gonna do here with the freeze frame is just delete, see that? His, that section of where I want the tail to exist or below the lower layers. Now that I've done that, and I've seen what it can do, I'm gonna put that all the way back to the topmost layer because it needs to be on the top layer, okay? Come on. Rearrange it. Get it all the way to the top. Remember, top layers are top layers. There we go. And then I'm gonna come all the way back to the bottom and say, okay, well, he's my frozen layer. He's on top. So everything that plays on a layer beneath him will be visible only in this little open window. So let me go ahead now and just activate my layer one. And you see now that is layer one's tail 
but everything else is the freeze frame of the top layer. Now, I know for a fact that 0.03 is not going to be a very good playback, even though it's pretty low. So let me just shift select and say no delay and hit play. Now, why on earth is that happening? Well, that is happening because only frame one had the freeze frame visible. So if I turn it off and then turn it back on, that freeze frame will now be visible on all frames forward. See how that happened? Because I made the change in, in the layer. Now, if I hit play, the only thing you're gonna see move is his tail, which doesn't seem to work. Oh, there it goes, see? So I can basically look at this right now and say, well, if his tail doesn't even start moving now until frame 50, what that basically tells me is I could take frame 49 and be below and get rid of it, make it lighter. But now I only have his tail move. It's a little complicated to grasp right now, but just remember that the way this, the sandwich of animation is doing is the freeze frame, I have cut out that section of the floor with his tail so that what is playing in the remaining frames is all those layers underneath him. And that, my friends, is a cinema graph. Now, I can make some adjustments really quickly here like I did before. Another reason why, of course, it's going very slow here inside of Photoshop is because, again, my image size is a 1920-1080. So if I take the shortest or the least of these, tell that to be 640, it's going to play back faster and take less memory. And then I can go back to my canvas size and tell that now to have the highest number, B640, that is going to clip it down to being a 640-640. Now, it would have been nice for me to just take all these layers and shift them over before I did that. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back before I clipped it. Select all the layers, but I also want to come here and select all my frames. So I have all the frames and all the layers selected, and I'm just going to move this guy over. Not that much, like that. Now, come back here, canvas size, pixels, 640. And now I get the illusion of him in a frozen state, but only his tail is moving. So you can imagine if I wanted the background to move, but not him, I would want to use a freeze frame of him and then have a moving background. You have the background work the whole time. That's kind of tough though, when you're dealing with a, an animal that's going to move whether you like it or not. But if you're going to film, let's say, like a person, tell them to hold still while the background's moving. And then you can use your little lasso to, or even a pen tool. Remember, we can use the pen tool to cut something out, cut them out frozen in time, and then have the background. Move. So you get something like that. Save it. It'll save it as a PSD even here. And then I can come along and export, save for the web legacy. Double check, yes, we're as a GIF, we're 640, we're 640, we're going to loop forever here. And I can even now that I've got this much fancier kind of color palette, let me show you what you can do here with some of these other compression types like patterning or noises or limiting of my colors. And it'll give me that kind of GIF look that you see in a lot of those memes. See if I choose down to like 64 colors and everything's going to make this file smaller and smaller as I do. Think. There we go. So I've done just 64 colors. 
And if you see here in his nose, you can see what this pattern type of compression does. You see that in a close up, you can actually see that GIF kind of effect, which you see out there. And it's now almost half the size it was before. Go ahead and save, image only, last name, Cinemagraph. Save. Let's see where it go. And here you have it as a cinema. Okay. Pretty neat stuff. Now I do notice there is a little warp of the floor here at the end. See that where it just gives me a little bit of a shift. And that is simply because when I told my video not to move, when I stabilized it, there was still just a little bit of warp movement by holding the, uh, the camera still. So I, but that's also why when I use my lasso tool to cut out the tail section, I use that, that feathering effect so it blends in, but there is just a little bit of pulse there in the loop. See that? I mean, I notice it. So, Cinemagraph, very cool stuff. Let's do another one. We've got time. Okay. Now, I do have an image here. Say, import video frames to layers. And it's called Water Pour. And I literally did this, guys, using a tripod. And again, I could come through here and find the section I only want to use. So, let's go there and I'll have it stop here selected range only and again whether I limit to every two frames or I just bring it out because I want a much higher cinemagraph here I want it to be very smooth so I'm just going to leave it not limit it it's going to convert this now to layers and frames So even here, if I want to just start by doing it, I could do again my image size, find the smallest of the two, 640. That is going to crop the entire image down to 640 in height. But then I need to crop the canvas to 640. And because I did not tell it to skip any frames, it's going to be basically trying to think of it at 30 frames per second. Do a canvas one now down to again pixels 640 to crop it down. Just like that. Now, if I wanted to actually make color correction to all this, because it's a little dark, for example, I would probably want to do that in the image in an After Effects or something like that, because otherwise I'd have to go to every layer and color correct it, you know, play around with the levels or something like that. So just as it is right now, shift select, say no delay. So this right now is just, right? It's a GIF. I'm building a GIF, but it's not a cinemagraph yet because I still have movement, okay? Now, what I want to do is the only thing I want to have moving is the water and the jar. I don't want my hand. I don't want the bottle. I don't want any of that to move. So once again, keeping it stupid and simple, find the one freeze frame. I could just do this this time with just the first one. I don't have to worry about it. Or I could choose the very last one since it's already on the topmost layer. What am I going to do with this now? Grab my lasso tool again. I could also create on this one an adjustment layer if I want to, but I'm just going to do it simple. And say what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to take away. 
Okay, so I've made that selection. Now, me personally, like I said, I like to add just a little bit of feather to get a little smoother edge quality rather than a harsh cut, right? I wanna have a little bit of feather to it all. Not as much as before, because again, this is a, I put my camera down, so it's actually not a moving camera, it's okay. So I currently have the water bottle select. Now, another shortcut to deal with this, instead of just deleting, remember there's non-destructive edit, is with that layer selected, I can actually come here and just apply a layer mask. And you see what it's done is it's currently gotten rid of everything but the bottle. Now I actually want to do the inverse of that, but I want to show you what we can do here because the lasso was a little sloppy. Well, with my, my mask selected here, see my layer mask, remember that's black and white. White is what I want to see, black is what I want to take away. So I can actually come here though, and clean this section up by just painting with the layer mask selected. Just the black, or I can switch to white and I can paint just the white. See? So I can clean up my selection now. Or a great way to think about this even, you just use a smaller, softer brush. You can see how you can just say, yeah, I want that top of that jar right there. And let's include a little top of the lip. Just like so. So I'm only, you can see, doing that too that top freeze frame. And if you want to, you can call it freeze. Now, if I go to the very beginning here and I activate it on, it should stay on throughout the entire. The problem is, as it stands right now, if I hit play, let's see, play. Oh, it wants me to go back to the beginning here, off and then on again. Now, if I hit play, because it was revealing the bottle, everything else will move except for the bottle. No, it's no, not working. Let's do this off and on. Let's try it. Why are you not? Oh, see, all these that needs to be visible. So let's just go ahead, hold shift, select them all, layer, off, on. There we go. Now they're all visible. The problem is, see, is it still, it's still not showing me. He's not showing me that. Looks like it wants me to go and choose them all in. If I had put this at the bottom, like I did with the previous cat video and then moved it back up to the top, it probably would have done it for me. Because I want my freeze. And like I did the cat. Be visible always. I know there's an easy solution in this. 
kind of frustrating if they work more than one person. <laughs> Remember, I told it to be every frame instead of little frames. Get that real ghostly quality. Wow, oh, I guess it did include all these. Maybe I just didn't rewind back far. See, these are all done. All right, let's try hitting play. Oh, I have one frame at the very end here I need to remove. This frame, right, let's just remove that. So now if I hit play, you're gonna notice that it's still not working. All right, yeah, you see what I did is I never went back to frame one. If I just do it here now, bing, they all should be active. I don't know why I didn't go back to frame one. But you see what's happening now. Just double check the frames. That. And if I have to engage that. Okay, I see what my problem is. I probably have to right click and apply that layer mask, but one thing I need to be aware of before I do that is that my layer mask is cutting out everything but the bottle. I actually want the opposite of that. And that can be done with a control inverse, control I. See that? So that now the bottle is going to be reflected from all the layers beneath of it. But my, see, now I'm getting the right result. So that the only thing that is now moving is the pouring of the bottle. And I am getting a very bad error here, and I don't know why. Let me see, what's my error? Something's going on. See how it's doing this weird cutout effect? I wonder if I actually have to apply my layer. Yeah, see, look what it did. It actually moved and shifted. Very bizarre. See that? Somehow or another, and that's why it's giving me this error. See that? That is just really bizarre. I'm doing that. All right, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go ahead and remove my freeze and reapply it. So again, once again, layer mask, Painting with white. I guess the need to paint with black. I guess you guys saw that it shifted my layer mask. I wonder if. Okay, so you see I painted my bottle black. All right, and it's visible and now it's working properly, but you see it's actually frozen. See that? It's actually frozen the background and the only thing that's animated now is this loop of the water pouring into the jar. Very weird. I don't know why it shifted my layer mask. Okay, so again, if I want to, I can keep working with that, or like I showed you before, if I control I and invert it, 
now the water will be frozen, but my arm and the bottle will be moving. Okay? So it's the invert. I kind of prefer everything frozen and this continuous pouring of water. And you'll notice it gives me a pretty gosh darn good loop at the end to go back to the beginning. So this is also where we can even kind of, you know, um, come in here and even do an adjustment layer for like, remember I said like levels. See, and this adjustment layer is going to be dropped onto the top and it will affect all the layers beneath of it. Okay? So that's kind of a cool thing there that you can adjust an adjustment layer for everything beneath of it, which now gives me a better quality graphic or image. Let's go ahead and play around with, you know, what other, you know, invert, gradient map, threshold, posterize, invert, photo filter, right? So while I can apply a photo filter to everything beneath of it, let's go with magenta. And that again is another adjustment layer on top, so it affects everything beneath of it. You know, brightness, conscious, curves, levels, patterns, exposure, all this stuff, vibrance. And again, that's affecting as an adjustment layer on top, it's affecting everything beneath. So again, pretty neat stuff for creating a cinema graph. Even, right? I could even come here and just say, hey, turn this into a black and white and be able to control, you know, how much black, but do greens go more black, do yellows go more black, okay? And create this kind of vintage cinema graph effect. Which is kind of odd and so on. And so these are your little icons represent what you're doing there in the different adjustment layers. And again, I could even have them activated. So let's say frame four have none of these. Okay. Actually, you have to go to the beginning, turn them all off. Frame seven then will have, you know, or let's say seven through 14, will have those affected. Frame 15 through 21 will have two affected. Frame 22 to 28 will have those three affected. Frame 29 through 37 will have all four affected. And you see I can, how I can even do and use those eyeballs on even the adjustment layer of everything beneath. Them. That's kind of a cool little trick. So pretty neat stuff here, messing around with all this. Again, remember, I'd be saving it as a PSD if I want to keep working on it, or I can export it for web legacy and choose the GIF to then be able to play around with different settings there and save it as an image only GIF or GIF. So pretty neat stuff. Now, if you need to, again, I do have some in the actual instruction for the file submission folder, there are some other samples here from people's past. Remember, there's tons of other resources and tutorials out there. I think one of my favorite um, tutorial even uh, which uses, instead of using the frame, uh, uh, converting footage to frames, it uses the video timeline, and it's a guy named Learn. Okay. See how to create a GIF and upload it to Instagram, how to create before and after GIFs, how to create a cinemagraph in Photoshop, how to create a cinemagraph in Photoshop. And this is this guy named Learn. You can see file formats in Photoshop explained. Here's what he looks like, how to create a frame animation. So again, there's lots of sources out there on besides what I've shown you. Um, 
just like there's plenty of information here on cinema graphs, right? Not just compilations of the best of or something like that, but, you know, and you can see where they're just using and cutting out certain sections to loop, but everything else is, something is moving, everything else is frozen. That's what makes these cinema graphs so intense. You know, and there's tons of uses. This person's, you know, cinema graph and Premiere Pro, cinema graph and Photoshop, cinema graph and After Effects. There's all kinds of potential with the software of using. I just wanted to focus this week on using the Photoshop to kind of create that content. Yeah, making cinema graphs for beginners. So pretty cool stuff. Go ahead and stop the share.